Hello. My name is Dr. Jeff Defoe, and I'm the instructor for the Summer 2020 offering of both body or dynamics. I'm an associate professor in the Department of Mechanical, Automotive, and Materials Engineering. I taught this course once before, last term in winter 2020. Uh, this term uh, in summer is going to be my first time teaching the course fully online. To give you a little bit of background about myself, I have my PhD in air breathing propulsion from MIT. Uh, most of my background is in aerodynamics, um, thermodynamics, and the acoustics of jet engines. And I've ex but I have extensive experience with computational fluid dynamics, or CFD. And I've supervised many senior undergraduate uh, design projects and have taught senior undergraduate courses um, in which I've had to acquire uh, sufficient, uh, I would say, expertise in external flow aerodynamics. I spend most of my time thinking about aerodynamics and CFD, um, and in teaching, as well as in my research, I like to focus on conceptual understanding of flow physics. So that tells you a little bit about myself and hopefully gives you some reason to believe any of the things that I'll have to tell you during this course. This is going to be an interesting transition for all of us going to online, but I think that um, I've been able to learn from some of the experienced online teaching folks at the university uh, over the last few weeks and expect that I'll be able to have a, a successful course um, and that hopefully all of you will enjoy it and feel like you've learned quite a bit along the way. What I want to spend the rest of this brief introductory video doing is giving you a little bit of a demonstration of the things that I'm going to have in the course website uh, on Blackboard. Uh, so I'm in a student preview mode right now, so what you see will be what you should see as students um, rather than what I see as the instructor. So the few things that I want to draw your attention to. Um, I'm not going to go through everything in here because most of you should have been seen Blackboard in previous uh, semesters. But there's a few things that I'm using maybe in a different way or that you may not have seen before because they're not commonly used. And those are the things I'd like to go through today. So the first of those is course messages. So I'll go ahead and click on that. And this is essentially a replacement for email. Uh, so Instead of using uh, emails to uh, contact me or the GAs in the course for questions um, or anything else, what I want you to do, and in fact as uh, is indicated in the syllabus, what you must do um, is compose messages here in uh, course messages. And this will basically act like an email system that's contained within the, the course's Blackboard site. So you would use this course messages uh, tool for uh, essentially private communication between yourself and me, so, or the GA. So if you um, wanted a clarification on a grade that you got on an assignment or a report um, or something like that, uh, this would be the place to do that. Let me just write a simple little sample message right now. Um, that's just my inbox. Okay, so if I want to create a new message, I can click here on create message, and then who do I want to send it to? And it's going to basically show me the list of everyone in the course. Um, and so here, I'll say we're going to send it to the instructor. And the subject is testing. This is a test message. You can attach files and attach images. Use all kinds of text formatting in this, just like you would in a normal email program. And you can also separately attach files here if you wanted to. And we submit this. And now we see it in your sent messages. And if I were to exit my student preview and go into my faculty view, I would see that I have an unread message. I could go in, look at it, and reply. The one thing to note about this course messages module is it does not know uh, or it doesn't have any way of sort of notifying you of messages. So it's up to you um, if you've sent a message and you're awaiting a reply, it's up to you 
to go in here, you know, once a day or whatever, and see if you've got any new messages. And I'll be doing the same as well as the, the, well, the, the graduate teaching assistants. The next thing I want to draw your attention to is the virtual classroom. Probably many of you had some experience with this late last semester um, when we had to suddenly move everything online. Right now I've got the course room locked because we're not using it. I'll unlock it um, on the days that we'll, we'll be using it. Um, so, and that'll, that'll happen according to a schedule. So this uh, course room will be used for two things. It will be used for uh, office hours um, with the GAs. Virtual classroom will also be used for my office hours but uh, there's a special link for those so that the same link is uh, available for students in all the courses I'm teaching this summer um, and that link is in the syllabus. But you would join this. You can't join right now because it's locked but if you click this normally there'd be a join button and you could do that. A key thing to know about using Virtual Classroom is it pretty much only works well if you're using Google Chrome or an equivalent uh, Chromium based web browser such as Brave which I use here um, as the web browser that you use to access it. If you use Safari, uh, unless you're on an iPad, Safari works okay on iPads, um, but on any computer or on a phone, um, a uh, Chromium-based browser is required in, in order for all the features to work properly. So this is where we will, you'll have office hours with the GAs and it's also where um, the five uh, labs uh, session weeks live lectures uh, or live lab session tutorials will be held. And we'll talk more about those in the, in the first lecture of the course where I outline the details of, of the class. But so this is something that you'll use uh, some weeks, but not always. The next thing I want to discuss that's going to be a very important, or at least I hope will be a very important part of the course, is the discussion boards. I'll click on that. Discussion boards are forums. So this is like Reddit um, or, or, or things like, like that. Um, it, it works the same way. So there are various forums which are essentially topics and, in, and, and sort of myself or uh, the GAs can create these topics in which we want there to be forums and then students can go in and create posts. Students can respond to each other's posts. Uh, uh, myself or the GAs can respond to things. So this is a great way, place to ask questions. This is sort of equivalent of several things you do in a face-to-face -face class. It's equivalent to the questions you might ask uh, by raising your hand in class and just asking. It's the questions that you might ask by approaching the instructor um, at the beginning or the end of the class. Um, that sort of thing. So we, we're going to try to group these by category. Um, the, the number of forms here will probably grow to you know maybe five or six over over time. Um, but basically, technical challenges is for things related to accessing the course material. Um, ask a question. This is sort of anything related to the the technical content of the course. And the emerging issues and ideas is meant for sort of any sort of new ideas or like problems with the. Uh, the course material or the way that things are being done that pop up and we'll try to troubleshoot those things there. So if I just were to go into the ask a question forum, I could create a thread. In creating a thread, I could say this is a test thread uh, just for the introduction video. This is my first message. I want to test this discussion board feature out. Of course, I can attach something. I won't do that here. And I can submit this. And now I see that there's a post here. And uh, someone else could go in and uh, add uh, responses, etc., just like you might expect to, to do uh, in any internet forum. Next thing I want to draw your attention to is a survey. So I've created a survey here um, on student locations, YouTube access, computing device access, and internet access. So it takes about less than a minute to fill out. It's four questions that are yes or no answers to each one. Your, your answers are anonymous. 
about 20 students have already filled this out. So I really appreciate those quick responses. But please, if you haven't done so already, please do take the time to do this. And the reason that I'm asking about this um, is uh, that it's really quite critical um, for this course that, that you mostly have these various uh, things sorted out. And I'll talk a little bit more about this in just a minute. Before I do that, I want to talk about the rest of the structure um, of the Blackboard site. And mostly this is on the bar at the left side of the screen here where we see I have it organized by week. So it's organized sort of chronologically and most of the weeks after week one are blank. Lecture one, um, I have the slides posted now, um, but uh, the lecture video will be coming in a few days. Um, and there's also a document for a social contract, which we'll talk about, uh, I'll talk about during lecture one and I encourage you to review. So basically in week one, we just we have a lecture. Um, in subsequent weeks, um, there'll either be a lecture, which will be a pre-recorded video plus slides, or a lab session each week. Now those lab sessions, as well as the midterm assessment and the lab report, reports that you're going to prepare will require some kind of device that's a little bit more sophisticated than a smartphone. You can have a laptop, a desktop computer, or a tablet that has maybe an external keyboard and mouse. You might be able to get away with a tablet without an external keyboard or mouse, but it's going to be really frustrating and slow and difficult for you. But when I looked at the preliminary results I have from the survey, fully a quarter of them so far indicate that, uh, that a quarter of the responses indicate that, that they don't have any of these kinds of, of, of electronic devices on hands. All I can say is I don't think I can teach you this course uh, in an online format if you don't have a computing device of some kind. So you've got a few weeks to get your hands on something. Even a very inexpensive, low-end uh, laptop or something like a Chromebook will be perfectly fine. Um, but you do need something computer-like to be able to properly um, use uh, the simulation software we'll be we're using, uh, the cloud-based SimScale, um, as well as writing up reports. Um, so when you're going to need this by is the first lab day, which is June 11th. So if you don't have something in place, as that June 11th approaches, I would really encourage you to contact me directly via course messages so that we can try to work out a solution. But you're not going to be able to actually do much of the course if you don't get your hands on that kind of a device uh, within that time frame. So that's about all that I, uh, oh, in terms of it, so no, there, there, there's definitely some students that are not in Windsor. I asked about time, time zone location. That's not a problem. Um, for the live lab sessions, they aren't required that you attend. Um, they're there for your benefit. Hopefully, since there are only five of them, you'll be able to attend them even if maybe based on your location, it's at sort of an odd time. No one seems to have any issues with YouTube access, so that's where I'll be posting the lecture videos. There'll be links uh, in the uh, content areas here. We talked about the computing devices and everyone seems to have high speed internet access. That's about all I want to cover in this brief introductory video. So uh, I want to thank you for taking the time to watch this and I look forward to the first uh, lecture uh, going online in a few days and then to starting to really meet and, and interact with you guys um, uh, following that uh, through course messages, the discussion boards and then ultimately through the live sessions in virtual classroom by the time we get to the first lab. Thanks. Have a great day.